Hey everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing. And today I want to talk to you, well, let, let me just start off saying this. You know, I started making a few clips and some dialogue and some vlogging about the best way to fish for flounder. I was on the fence where I was going to collect a lot of material throughout this flounder season to share it with you for next flounder season. But you know, I thought I would go ahead and release some of that information. I know it's a bit late in the season, but I'm going to release that information and upload that information anyway. Because I have received quite a few questions about flounder, especially for people who really don't, who really do not typically target flounder. Hopefully you find some of these tips helpful for you when you're out there trying to hook up to those flounders. And like I said, I was going to hold off to some of this information. I also have a couple of popular locations that are easy to get to and easy to access so anybody who is wanting to go out and go look for those flounders aren't customary to targeting and fishing for flounders or maybe you simply haven't fished any of these locations before now there are no secret spots they're really popular and they can get a bit crowded on the weekend but I did want to go through and share some of those locations with you that information isn't on this video but it will be released uh, shortly after this video is dropped so keep an eye out for that too so thanks thanks for coming back and i hope you enjoy some of this information hey everybody welcome back ruben with texas all water fishing and today i want to talk about five things that everybody should know when it comes to flounder fishing now whether you're new to the flounder fishing game or you're a seasoned flounder vet here's some tips how you can improve yourself and to be able to catch some of those nice flatties that we're all searching for this time of season. First thing, let's talk about the rig. How should you rig your leader and how should you rig your line to go out there and be more effective to catching those flounder? Now you can always go with a single traditional one lure setup or you can do what a lot of us are doing this time of the year. It's when we start fishing a lot more tandem rigs. Now what I do sometimes is I will pre-make some of my rigs using crimps and a swivel quick release setup right there so I can interchange out my rigs. You may take the time and do this yourself. You may not. I, I don't know. I know I try to do at least a couple of these, especially when I'm going wade fishing and um, I don't really have the time or the energy uh, to really sit out there and stand in some of this cold water and, uh, and retie another tandem line. Now there's a lot of different ways you could tie up tandems. Uh, there's a bunch of different... There's a bunch of different videos online. We're not really going to get into tying tandems, but I will tie, I'll tie tandems too. Just briefly, the simple setup is you want to put the heavier jig head on bottom and you want to put the lighter, uh, a less weighted jig head on top. Now you can even change this up with different color schemes or you can go with the a matching pair or you can even change it up with different different lures. I'll do either or. I'll either change it up or leave them the same. Now if you're fishing with live bait, my go-to live bait is mullet, although a close second is mud minnows. I would stay away from the shrimp during, you know, I would stay away from the shrimp, especially when you're targeting flounders, because let's face it, everything and anything is going to bite on that shrimp. But flounder really love the mullet. They really love the mud minnow. Put those two on and put them on a Carolina rig to help sink to the bottom, give that flounder a little bit of room. I would shake them up every once in a while just to get that little rattle of the Carolina rig and to wake that fish up to make it move around a little bit. And one of the hooks that I definitely will go with is the kale hook. That's typically my go-to hook. I like to use that and the circle hook, but typically that kale hook is my go-to hook for hooking that big mouth flounder. Now when it comes to lures, there's a bunch of different lures out there. There's lures all over the market, but the number one lure to me for catching flounder, and to the majority too, because you know I just went to, I just went to Academy today, and I couldn't find the lures. Someone just went through there and destroyed their whole section of the lures I was looking for. It's goat. Now this is a variety bag that I was using the other day when I was weight fishing, so ignore what's in the con what's in the bag. But yes, goat is the number one lure for me. You know you can either, you know I goat, they always leak. All the containers leak. So you can put it in a bladder like this. This is this is what I prefer. I prefer the bladder, or you can put it in your own storage food saver bladder. I've done that as well. Number one is gope, and number two is close. Number two is my beloved chicken boy. Both of these lures will 
catch a lot of flounder for you. Now, when I am tossing something other than goat that's not scented, I will put that pro cure on there. I would put that chicken shit on there. Um, that's Chicken Boy's scent. Our pro cure that flounder pounder is really good scent, or even the even the inshore um, scent is really good. Third tip would be the weather. The weather will play a lot of factors in the flounder bite, especially down here in the Gulf Coast area. Now, we will get those cold front systems that do move through our area, and it seems like those will always trigger the bite. We'll make those larger flounders that we're all looking for, those 18, 19, and 20 inch plus flounders come out. So watch the weather, keep your eye on the weather. It's always great to fish ahead of the front, and it's always great fishing to fish right behind a cold front. Now, fishing with lures, keep in mind, a lot of times those cold fronts, those northeast, those north winds will make the water really dirty and really crumb it up. So then that's when you have to switch off to some of those darker lures. Those flounders are a sight first fish. They will see their prey and they will attack it. They will lay on the bottom, looking up, waiting for it to come by, and then they will attack their prey. So sight and smell. Two great keys when you're fishing for flounder. Number four, the tide. Water movement is always very important when fishing for flounder. Either incoming or outgoing tide, flounder seem to really love and enjoy when that water is moving and that bait is being pushed around. It makes them chase it and it makes them very, very more active. So plan your trip. Check out the tides and plan your trip around the tides to make sure that you're out there on the water at those key tide changes and those key tide movements. All right, so we lost some footage from my previous recording. So let me just pick up where we left off. We're talking about the water movement. One of the other things when it comes to the water is looking for those deep holes. You want to look for the deep spots in the water or in the channels. You want to fish just right above the drop-off or right on the drop-off, right around. Now, that also ties into the fifth thing that I want to talk about, its structure. Now, whether you are fishing around an oyster reef or you're simply fishing on a pier, um, on the sides of the pier where, like, the pylons are, you can just sit there and jig and just walk up and down. If you're fishing around a boat ramp or any kind of structure like that, that you're standing on um, if you look down and fish against that wall around the boat ramp or around the structure you're on and just jig slowly try to get your lure as close as you can to the wall and just jig slowly now you can also just work the area like a grid cast four to six feet out bounce your lure start slowly or slowly retrieve it on the bottom and pause bounce it or slowly retrieve it on the bottom pause Four to six feet out here, scoot over, four to six feet out, come back, scoot over, four to six feet out, come back, and just work that entire water surface. Now, flounders are tricky. You can actually pass them up as you're jigging, Turn back around a few minutes later and go over the same area that you just fished and a flounder will bite. I have no idea why, but it's true. It happens all the time. They're moving, they're chasing bait, or maybe they're just you know, just a little subtle twitch or a little something different that they're going to see in the lure is going to trigger that bite. So fish to structure. So fish structure, any structure, rocks, jetty rocks. Now I know there's a lot of hangups involved, and that's one of the things that you have to take. You have to take the bad with the good, especially when you're coming around, especially when you're fishing for flounder, because they will hang around in that structure, work around the structure, you know, work the lure slow, work the lure fast, you know, change up your cadence, and simply just find the pattern that they're going to be biting on. You know, one other thing that I would mention is utilize Google Maps. Take a look at Google Maps. Look at some of the surrounding areas that you're interested in fishing. Now this is what I do a lot of times when I'm scouting out and looking for a new area to wade fish or to put my kayak in. 
and then I'll get boots on the ground. I would drive over there, take a look at the ground, see if I could get in and out that area, make sure there's no restrictions, it's not private property, and I won't be trespassing. I'll get over there, take a look, especially if I'm weight fishing or kayak, to see if I have easy access in and out the water. So I would suggest, again, utilize Google Maps, be out there, get adventurous, and try to find a spot that you can call your own. I hope you have found this information helpful to helping you land that big flounder out there and have some success this flounder season. Now stay tuned. I'm going to have a couple of the uploads where I'm going to show a couple of the popular spots to fish for flounder this time of the year. Hopefully you'll find that information helpful as well. So stay tuned. Keep an eye out for that. I just want to thank each and every one of you for continuing to support the channel. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, turn that bell notification on, let you know next time I upload a video. Until next time, hopefully you catch me hooking up. Thanks.